Hey kids, Andre from Oregon Coast Beach Connection here with seven fun facts about these beaches. Did you know Cannon Beach wasn't the original Cannon Beach? Indeed, back about a hundred years ago, Arch Cape had that name because of the cannon from a wrecked ship that were found there. Tiny Arch Cape officially got its name in 1912, and in 1922, the little town of Ecola became Cannon Beach because, get this, Ecola residents were getting their mail mistakenly sent to a place called Eola near Salem. Manzanita is known for a lot of shipwreck lore, including one going all the way back to the 1700s. One shipwreck, called the Glen Eslin, caused a stir here about a hundred years ago. From the Neocani vantage points, if you look down at the rocks from the right spot, you can supposedly see part of the Glen Eslin. Personally, I've yet to see it after 18 years of looking. Rockaway Beach's twin rocks are actually a geologic surprise. About 18 million years ago, there was a volcanic eruption so heavy it burrowed into the ground and came up again as a re-eruption. All this area was ocean back then, the beach was at least 20 miles east. Cannon Beach's haystack rock was created the same way. Next to Oceanside, Short Beach is a monstrously cool beach hiding in plain sight. But before 18 years ago, it was dangerous to get to with just a slippery slope where people cracked their heads a lot. Locals got tired of it and funded the Stairway of a Thousand Steps. It does indeed feel like a thousand steps, but it's safer now. Lincoln City was very nearly called Surfland. Back in 1964, when the town was formed, those who wanted the name Surfland Oregon were almost a majority and came precariously close to winning in a vote. There's some talk the name was already decided in backroom deals, however. Since then, others have tried to change the name to Lincoln Shores and even Beach City. Parts of Newport are crumbling rather quickly. The rocky nubs you see at the tide line were once where the cliffs came up to. About 100 years ago, those blobs were part of a much-loved structure called Jump Off Joe, which was huge. It disappeared into the tides within 30 years of being disconnected from its parent cliff. Now, that cliff with the ruins of a condo has the name Jump Off Joe, and most of that has disappeared since the 90s. Here's a creepy fact. Some of Yahats' streets likely have Native American remains buried beneath them. Shell bins from native tribes have been around for hundreds of years, but in the early 20th century, state officials used most of those to help create the roads. Aside from the archaeological losses, those shell middens are actually where some of their dead were buried. This is Andre from Oregon Coast Beach Connection. I'll see you on the beach and on the net. Beachconnection.net, that is.